All right, today I'm going to show you how to import a reference image into your ZBrush project file on your iPad, kind of like this. So let's go to the home button. Let's just make a new project really quick. Pick the sphere, whatever. So the first things first is you want to have one of these palettes over here on the right side. Now, if you don't have anything like this, I'm going to go ahead and delete it so you can actually see how to do that. You're going to go to your tool panel on the right side over here. And under tool, you're going to go to the grid of dots at the very top. You see where my cursor is and just pull that out. That will basically separate this menu and give you this other little menu that you can play with here. Now, from here, under the three dots, we're going to go to add palette. And under add palette, we're going to go to our floor grid. This will give us the options for our floor grid properties. And you can see your floor grid with this crosshair XYZ thing right here. And you can see that as I turn this on and off, it's turning off our grid. I also do recommend turning off perspective because looking at your model from an orthographic view will make things a little bit easier if you're just getting started. So that being said, we're going to go to the top left hand corner, which is our import option, the little down arrow. And then under our texture, we're going to go to select file and you must save an image on your iPad. You, I, unless someone knows some magic, I don't know where you can actually access your photos. So on my iPad, I have a folder here called reference and I'll just pull in my image like so and hit import. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my floor grid just for a second, just so we can see what's happening. The floor grid is basically going to give us a perspective, either the front, back, left or right, or up and down. So I'm going to just going to do the front and back. So I'll turn on my floor grid options. And if we scroll down, we're going to see this front, back, up, down, left, right. Like I said, we're going to do front, back, and I'm going to turn on this map one and select it. And now when I do select map one, it'll give us a texture menu. These are all the textures that come with ZBrush on the iPad, but I'm going to scroll down to the number of images that I have here and import my reference image. Now, before you click off the video, there's a couple things you should know. First off, if you scroll up into the floor grid properties, you have this option called fill mode, and it'll basically change either the opacity or like how the geometry is going to interact relative to your reference image. So there's that. And then you also have this front mode, which will basically make your object also transparent so you can kind of see things through it. Now, why would you do something like this? Well, what you would want is, let's say I wanted to match the silhouette of this sword, and I wanted to create this beveled shape. So I would go to my 3D gizmo and then go to my cogwheel and I'd set this to a, a polyplane like so and then make sure that it's a single polygon by making sure these triangles are pulled in and then I would kind of just push this up to the very top and start positioning the points based on the silhouette of my shape. Now, if you do want to do that, what you would do is you would go to your brush menu in the top left hand corner, go down to your topology and Z modeler, and then you're going to make sure that you are using your point move mode right here. So we can see point move and then I'm going to go ahead and turn this on infinite Z so that whenever we select a point, it's going to select everything in the infinite Z space. And I'll just push these points over here like so. Oh, come on. Do, 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 push that there, push that there. That's fine, cool. And then from here, what I would do to continue following that silhouette is I would go to my edge mode and then go to extrude and then make sure I'm doing extrude. I think the default will be fine for this example just to get you started. And then from here, I would get in nice and close and then go ahead and just extrude this out, push these points where they need to be and just make sure I am accurately selecting all of my points, extrude down, and then push that out. And then I would just basically follow the full length of this sword. Now I'm not gonna do that because I just wanna show you how to import the reference grid, but this is the sword that I made. And I'm really stoked about it because I'm working on some cool things for fun and learning. And I thought I would share a quick tip that I did while I was going through this entire process of the sword. So if you learned something, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. And as always, one gram of protein per pound of body weight makes gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.